Program manager at a community mental health organization. And are you um, a supervisor there? Correct. Yes, I am. <coughs> you supervise. When you, what is, what do you do with regard to patients who are referred to you for mental health treatment? What's, what is, what is the team that you're in charge of doing? We go out and we visit them in their homes. We um, make sure that we are providing them. Uh, with medication um, and with uh, skill building as far as teaching them how to go shopping if they don't know how to do that, laundry, but a lot of it is um, going out to visit, make sure they stabilize the medication management. What about housing? Do you have any involvement with housing? <coughs> My particular agency does not provide the housing, but because of the program we have, we work with a, uh, another agency that works with us with a grant and they provide the housing for us. So you, are, is your team part of a, assisting people with housing? Yes. And when, you, when I'm referring to teams, can you tell the court what, what kind of team is involved with any particular patient who, who is um, referred to because of mental health concerns? <coughs> okay, so what we do is we are called an, an ACT team, so it's assertive community treatment. It is a program that works with um, people who are severely and persistently mentally ill. And you have a team of social workers, we have a psychiatrist, and a nurse that works with us. And we're responsible for going out to our consumer's home, working with them, providing um, medication management therapy. And 
do you keep records with regard to the um, person that you're that you are involved with? <coughs> the records that are kept by any one person in the team, are you are you familiar with each and every piece of those records? Yes. Are they kept in the regular business practices of the development center? Yes. And did you provide records with regard to somebody who was known to you as Deanna Meyer? Yes. And how was Deanna Meyer a person who was known to you? She was um, referred through um, our program from the shelter. Uh, she came into the program, we provided her with housing, and then my team provided her with the mental health services. And when you're talking about a team, can you tell us if you were somebody who personally interacted with Deanna Meyer? Yes. And other persons on your team? Probably. Everyone, yes, everyone on the team has had some contact with her. I'm going to show you what's been marked as people's proposed exhibits number 22, 23, 24. 25, 26, and 27 to ask you if you're familiar with these records, if they are records with regard to Deanna Minor, and if they're records that are kept in the regular business practices of the Development Center and the ACT um, program within it. Okay. May I approach your honor? Yes. Yes, these are our progress notes. And you're the first person who reviews them. You're the supervisor in charge of maintaining the records? Each staff person does their own notes. Um, when I do a chart review, I basically look at um, look at the, um, the, the report that they have done. I don't necessarily go through all of their progress notes. The, are these records that are kept in the, these records, actual records that are in your hand, copies of records yes. that are kept in the regular business practices of the development center? Yes, they these, are. All right. I have nothing. I have, I move for admission, Your Honor, of people's 22 through 27, which are specifically records with regard to Deanna Meyer. Uh, objection, Your Honor. The, the records, the business record exception is not applicable for those records. Those are medical records pertaining to Ms. Miner's uh, uh, mental condition or record from a social worker, which all fall under MRE 501, the privilege is Diana Miner. So if, unless she waives that privilege or somebody on her behalf waives that privilege, those records are inadmissible, Your Honor. Furthermore, I believe they're not relevant unless uh, there's some connection that these records were provided to either Elena Brown or Kelly Williams. Deanna Miner's progress records would not be relevant to the issue before this court. Well, first of all, these are not medical records. These are observations of, of workers who are um, making observations with regard to Deanna Miner, providing for the medical. And secondly, Your Honor, these are only these. Each one of the records that I <coughs> selected here, because they're obviously would be much more voluminous and counsel has been provided with the complete copies. Each one of these only referred to Deanna Miners and interactions with CPS. The ones that I'm moving to admit. Okay, so first of all, I see that they're signed by counselors. Um, so they're doing counseling records and I don't see I don't, there hasn't been a foundation. I'm looking at these and I don't see any information with regard to CPS in there. So, I, I see lots of information. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm going to show you, if you would court like me to get for the foundation. I'm going to show you the one, the one that's marked 22, dated May, uh, April 20th, 2016, and ask you, if on the bottom of page three, it refers to interactions with CPS. Do you have anyone specific from CPS or just CPS? It, it, that particular record indicates a call, the call that was made in the reason. It's just that, I mean, so it was in, 
Status, uh, Omega Mental Health Advocate and Consumer is signed by a social worker, and let me see the other check marks pertaining to this. Uh, uh, mental and physical health, and, and so forth in this, Your Honor. It's uh, sections discussing Ms. Miner's uh, mental and physical health starting from June of 2015 through June 2016. This is not just, uh, and is signed by Deshaun West, uh, LBSW, a social worker, Your Honor. This, so this record would fall under the uh, NPRE 501 as privileged communication, Your Honor. It's, any, it's a, a considered a medical record. It has her, it's, it's charting uh, this minor, uh, it has her medications in here too. It talks about her behavior. As observed by who? It's only signed by a social worker, Your Honor. So I would have to presume, only can presume that this is a social worker that performed this, uh, <coughs> that completed this report, Your Honor. Okay. So it's, it's a social worker, not a medical doctor. But the social workers uh, are also included under M MRE 501 as privileged communication. <coughs> I don't believe that's true, Your Honor. Oh, that's Your Honor, it's uh, MCL 333.18513. Creates an evidentiary for privilege for communications between social workers and their clients. In general, a social worker may not be required to disclose the client's communication or advice the social worker gave the client in the course of professional employment, which, which is uh, in conjunction with MRE 501, is, is considered a privilege, Your Honor. The records, Your Honor, are. From the development center, the, the the this is not a therapist, but this is an overall um, person who is offered. Your Honor, there is no testimony as to that. That's counsel testifying. Uh, the, uh, the witness only indicated that she's familiar with the record and it's a team. And, but, but Your Honor, the record speaks for itself that is signed by a social worker. Does your team also consist of a therapist? I, I would be, cons I'm the master's level clinician, so I would be considered a therapist. Okay. These are, the, these are not, we're not admitting these records with regard to 
No, we're, we're admitting, moving to admit these records to show that the interaction, the information that was provided to protective services, the exact same thing that's in the protective service records itself, saying that they contacted him on May 6th, contacted Elena Brown on May 6th, contacted Elena Brown on May 12th, that they called to report um, she wasn't taking her medication. They were concerned about Aaron, not with regard to her medical condition, to regard to their concerns about Aaron Minor and the, and the department's failure to act on concerns that were being expressed. They have, I mean, they have a duty and obligation to report their concerns. They did so, and the, and the department did not act. That's, that's what they're being admitted for, not to show any any particular mental illness, which she can't testify to anyway. Your Honor, uh, based on what counsel wants to admit them for is irrelevant. The rules are clear that it's a medical record, that the medical record has a privilege, that privilege has to either be weighed by the person who's the client or, or the patient, or has to be weighed by someone on their behalf. The witness has testified that she's a clinician. Some of these uh, documents have her name on them. Clearly, she's a clinician, so she can't speak to these documents unless it was weighed by the ad minor or someone on her behalf. And so, she can't speak to those things as the prosecutor indicated as to what steps or measures were taken by him as it relates to them contacting CPS. Uh, Your Honor, they can testify as to the steps and measures that were taken by them. The, the witnesses is here. Uh, they can call other witnesses to, to that oh, effect. Please, no. Okay. <laughs> but Your Honor, just but the privilege is still the uh, the privilege still belongs to the Anna Minor, and since she has not well, waived it, those things that are protected by the privilege, such as her medical diagnosis, condition, and the like, I would agree with you. But as to those things that may have been a concern to this witness who's testifying, what measures she took to contact CPS and so forth. You're, you're right. Well, that being the case, uh, uh, first still there will be an objection because every clinician, well, not every, I'll, I'll be overstepping, but clinicians take a history. So that history becomes part of their medical record. That history is still not discoverable or uh, the privilege still applies to that history because it's part of their medical record. But, it, but in furtherance of, of this case, Your Honor, the uh, evidence, the exhibits that prosecutor often would have to be almost completely redacted for that purpose. Yeah, this, but they're not at this point, Your Honor. Nor have they been admitted. Okay. And Your Honor, I would indicate too that there is an exception when, when the reports are with regard to risk or violence or um, threats to others. The, the social workers are obligated actually to report that. You're right. They're duty bound to report, but they're not duty bound to provide their medical records. Just as what happened in this case, the first report. We're all talking about the same thing. Yeah. I'm going to allow you to expound upon those things that may have been brought to her attention and she um, relayed that information to CPS. But as far as her medical condition goes and diagnosis and that type of thing, um, I think the privilege would come into effect with um, a woman allowed that. Um, ma'am, it's part of what your <coughs> your um, team did. Did they did you dispense medication? Yes. Can you tell the court in what form the medication through what form it was dispensed? Objection, Your Honor. I sustain the objection. Yes, I, I don't. I, I don't understand what, why they would have. They're not. It doesn't go to diagnosis. It doesn't go to. Um, what do you to mean? By form I meant dispensed. like how, how, like physically, it's dispensed. Why do I care about that? Because you wanted me to tie up the blister pack. 
And your honor, your honor, unless uh, the witness specifically filled that prescription, uh, she still would have knowledge of that. It would no. cause some speculation. All she would know is she del that they delivered them to her home in a certain form. Would you be able to tell me that? Yes. <laughs> What, your Honor, just one last, well, I won't say one last, but another objection, Your Honor, is the, the exhibits are held in advance proven relevance. The form of them being delivered does not address the relevancy issue as to... Uh, I think she may go, we'll give her some latitude, maybe she'll get to that. I will do objection, you may proceed. What, when I say form, are they given in bottles or some other format? They are given in blister packs. And how are, and was that what happened with Deanna Minor or something else? Yes. What happened? She was given blister packs. And how frequently was she given blister packs? Objection, Your Honor. That goes into her medical condition, Your Honor. Okay. You can answer how I can ask her how often I gave them to her. How often? Yeah. Weekly. And. Starting when? Um, she came onto the program <coughs> in May, so um, we start immediately when she May comes to our doctor. Do you know specifically? No, I don't. Are I don't you talking know. about May of 2015? She came onto our program, I believe, in May of 2015. Once she entered into our program as far as being in housing, that's when we would start taking her medication. And you're just a delivery <coughs> service, correct, in that, with regard to that? The team, yes. And what did there come a time after in April of 2016 that you became concerned about um, Aaron Minor? I wouldn't. Well. Yes. Yes. As a result of your, what was what was your concern? We discovered um, that um, Ms. Minor was not uh, taking her medication. Was there anything about her interactions with you or the team that was also a concern to you? Yes. What was that? Objection, Your Honor. Again, uh, she's a uh, she's a clinician. Ms. Minor's condition, how she was reacting. All falls within her medical records and falls within her privilege, and that privilege hasn't been waived, Your Honor. Not unless, not if it's a it concern for the welfare or safety of a child. It, it, that, that is an exception. They are duty bound to report concerns about safety and welfare of children and anyone else for that matter. Did you make such reports because of the safety of Aaron Martin? Um, yes and no. What does that mean? It means that my concern was more that mom was not taking her medication, so I did not know if that would affect how she would care for her child. Nothing specific as to, nothing specific or concrete as to her neglect or abuse as to the child? No. And who did you contact? I contacted CPS. Right. And did you report your concerns beyond the medication at that time? Yes. What else were your concerns besides what you just articulated to the judge? The, well, then that goes to her behavior. I have to observe her behavior, so. Okay. I, I think the judge, was, it, well, I, I believe the argument <coughs> is that the concerns about her behavior are what caused, or in part caused, the report. That they are required to report concerns about a parent's behavior and ability to care. Were you concerned about Miss Minor causing harm to herself or someone else? Yes. Your Honor, I made just uh, the report and the complaint uh, from the witness office as part of the evidence at this point, Your Honor. That was the initial complaint uh, given to the uh, Child Protective uh, Service Department. So any further uh, discussions, 
these questions continue to go into Ms. Miner's state of mind or what she observed as a clinician, which still would be uh, under the privilege, right? I don't think we've gotten there with the state of mind. Okay. Your Honor, I would indicate, too, that um, Mental Health Code, Section 330196, um, um, parenthesis C, and if a mental, indicate, it that states that if a mental health professional has reason to believe that the third person who is threatened is a minor or is incompetent by other than age, takes the steps set forth in subdivision B, which She's testified though, that there was no, I mean, she didn't. was there any threat <coughs> any to, to the minor? No verbal threat, no. Physical? No physical. The, did you believe that her, that her behavior was a threat? Objection, Your Honor. The belief of the witness that her behavior goes directly to her being a clinician, Your Honor. And Your Honor, she, she just testified that there was no threat, physical or... Uh, or mental to the child. So anything beyond that goes to her observations as a clinician, Your Honor. The statute that you just read, it speaks as to whether or not there is a viable, identifiable threat to herself or to someone else. It does not, that, Your Honor. Excuse me? <laughs> that, the, that the person would then be obligated to disclose for the protection of whomever. It does not. If I, in, okay. in other words, because I have a hunch or I might have a suspicion that based on the person's behavior something may happen, I don't think that that gets around the privilege. I think that there has to be something identifiable. There has to be some kind of threat of physical harm to herself or to someone else. All right. May I, can I respond with this? We went through with the witness who not with the witness her, that the, that the requirement is that when somebody is that a parent with mental illness not whether they're a threat, but can, but we're talking about a risk of harm, and that. And he made a very clear distinction when you talk about a risk and, and, and someone. Um, anything can be a risk. There are a number of, of variables that you look at that may be a risk. Doesn't mean that that person is going to cause an actual harm to themselves or to someone else. But the, the department, the rules of that govern protective services, workers during an investigation, specifically state that when a person there's a report that a parent may be disabled as a result of physical or mental illness and unable to care for a child. So that's what that's what is being reported. That's what they're supposed to act on. Whether they're whether there's reports that this parent may be unable to care for the child. And what they're supposed to do is have been investigating whether this parent was unable to care for that due to physical or mental problems. Did they have reports that this parent, because this, their, it's their job to investigate based on whether or not they get reports about whether or not this parent may be unable to parent. You don't have to wait till the child gets killed, the child gets injured. Your Honor, I just, or, I just want to interrupt our counsel uh, testimony for a moment here to get back to the, to the issue at hand, whether or not the witness, uh, the privilege has been waived as to the out of minor. She's testifying or uh, regarding what the CPS worker may or may not be required to do, but she's not responding to whether or not this witness or provide any legal basis for this witness to waive the privilege that the Anna Minor has, Your Honor. I, I thought I was responding to the court's specific question. The, 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 the,
the the actual statute talks about if the, a mental health person has reason to believe that the per, that a person may be a threat, not that they actually saw a threat, articulated a threat, but had concerns and reasons to believe, and that is what. That, at, at that point, the privilege is raised when they have reason to believe. Um, I think that the court properly quoted the language. If a patient communicates to a mental health professional who's treating the patient a threat of physical violence against the patient, the the sorry. The statute reads, if a patient communicates to a mental health professional who is treating the patient a threat of physical violence against a reasonable identifiable third person, and the recipient has the apparent intent and ability to carry out that threat in the foreseeable future, then the mental health professional has a duty to take action. That's law school 101. Your Honor, I don't know. Statute, the statute on 2C, okay, under 3 if a mental health professional has reason to believe that the third person who is threatened is a minor, it is... But here's the problem. Is threatened. You haven't established that somebody is threatened. No, has reason to believe that a third person who is threatened. Is so, threat is un being unable to parent a, a three-year-old child. That's a threat. You can't call 911 when you're three. These are threats. Being unable to take care of your child. Being not physically and mentally, having the physical and mental capacity <coughs> are threats to a minor. That's why she talks about the person being threatened is a minor. Because it, it's not, you don't have, obviously, you can't, you can not actually physically kill the kid or beat the kid and be a serious threat when a kid is three years old <coughs> or not even three yet. And you can't take care of them. And there's nobody else to take care of them. Your, Your Honor, based on uh, counsel's uh, rendition, any person that has any discussion with their therapist about that they're having trouble parenting their child or they're concerned about something with their child, their privilege would be waived. The mental health code does not bounce over into these proceedings waiving this privilege. The, uh, the mental health code is talking about a duty to report if there is an actual threat of harm. The witness testified there was no mental or physical threat. And the duty to report still does not waive the privilege of all her medical records. It's a duty to report that specific item at that specific time that it's a threat to a specific person. It does not waive that person's entire medical history, Your Honor. And so the privilege to what you're talking about, a three-year-old not being able to call 911, that's not, that's not the only way a threat can be conveyed. And as I understand it, if the patient, the, the, the mother here, is expressed some kind of threat or the like, then the worker would have a duty to report the same. My, I, I, I respectfully disagree, and there is, the, the, it specifically delineates minors and other persons who are unable to care for themselves, and which places a greater duty on the social worker. Okay. If a mental health professional, and this is, um, this is C, has reason to believe that a third person who is threatened is a minor, or is incompetent by other than age, and takes <coughs> steps step, step forth in subdivision B, and communicates threats to the Department of Social Services in the county where the minor resides, and to the third party's custodial parent, non custodial parent, or legal guardian, whoever is appropriate in the best interest of the third person. So you're required to act in the best interest of the heir of the. the first sentence. Well, the threat. Read again, yeah. one more time. All right. I, 
I can. I, what I, I want you to read what's there. I don't need your interpretation. Read what's there. If a mental health professional has reason to believe that a third person who is threatened is a minor, do you want me to continue? Is threatened to include at risk for not for not being cared for. Your for Honor, not I realize the problem with the witness that you call made a distinction between threat and at risk. Well, and they, they made that distinction. I'm not a social worker. This is the information you provided me. The, the, the requirements that the protective services, well, first of all, if they're not required to, they're, this, the, he agreed that the protocol says, the protocol says that you must continue to evaluate threats, number one. Number two, he agreed that the protocol states that a threat includes uh, Honor, now, now or a hot well the, I, the I mental don't health code is, is very specific. Now she's talking about Mr. Park's testimony. We're still here with the social worker sitting in, in the witness chair and a privilege that counsel still has not articulated has been waived. Okay. All right. I was responding to the court's question. Okay. Go ahead. A threat, I think that we that we went through the threat, that they identified threats and including in that threat is the inability to parent or to care for a child due to physical and mental disabilities. Um, the fact that their state of Michigan person wants to claim that there's no threat to Aaron when it, this mother is seriously mentally ill and it's being reported over and over is fine. The court can take, the court can adopt that testimony or not. That, that, that no threat is, no threat to the ability of Deanna Minor existed. Okay, this, let's, again, let's start over. What's your question to this witness? The question I asked her was. Just ask her now. Alright, ma'am. Was were there concerns about her ability to parent Aaron? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Um, what were what what did you base your concerns on in the initial April twentieth um, communication? I will have to speak to her behaviors. Is based, that okay? on, based on her behaviors, you were concerned about her being a risk to Aaron? Yes. A threat to Aaron? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, did, all, did you have further communication with protective service worker Elena Brown on May 6th? Yes. Did you communicate continuing concerns? Yes. Did you reiterate, did you actually... What did you tell me? Um, the, well, the conversation, I believe, went like this. Uh, Ms. Brown did call me back and let me know that she went out to the home um, and that she could see that there was something not right, but there was no, she had no grounds to remove the child. And so um, the only thing I believe I said was that I believe that she was um, still declining mentally. Do you or any member of your team have the ability to remove the child yourself? No. That had to be through CPS? Yes. Ma'am, did Elena Brown say to you at any point, if you're concerned, don't call me, call some other number? No. Did you, why, why did you talk to her about your continuing concerns? We only had one conversation. Was there another conversation with someone else on May 13th? Yes. A member of your team? Yes. 
Are you aware of it? I'm sorry, who was that conversation between? I believe it was between Ms. Brown and John Fairchild. And Mr. Fairchild's here. I, I was hoping to um, put in the records without, since they're kept in the regular, Mr. Fairchild without being testified, but he is available. Um, own knowledge know what what did you communicate something with regard to Deanna Deanna Minor when you spoke to that when you spoke to um Elena Brown on May 6th? I don't I just the only thing I can remember I said is I think she's still declining mentally but that was it. So did your concerns continue about um Eric? That I was I still concerned about um, Eric. Yes. Did um, <coughs> you receive some text messages that also concerned you? No, not not me specifically. Did you review text messages from those people? Yes. Did you, um, who were the text messages from? Well, did you, did you ever have somebody confirm that they had in fact sent uh, the text messages? Objection, that's a speculation, Your Honor. Here's my suspect. Did you, well, on May 6th, Did Elena Brown tell you when you spoke to her on May 6th what she was going to do as a result of your concerns, if you recall? I think I, what I recall is that she had already went out. Okay. Did she tell you what she was going to do? I don't recall her telling me what she was going to do. I'm going to have you take a look at page 3 at the bottom, the last sentence of the last full paragraph. See if it refreshes your recollection of what she's report. The major <coughs> report. You want me to read what I wrote? What I no, it doesn't make you remember. Yeah. What do you now remember that she told you she was going to do? She said that she does not have. She did not have grounds to remove the child, but she will continue to monitor the environment. Were you aware? records that you are familiar with and if you if they well yeah. was there if you know was there a, as a part of your team was there continuing reports on May 12th as far as I can recall um, a phone call was made from CPS and they did speak to a member of my team what does MHA stand for? Mental Health Advocate. Okay. And I'm going to ask you if, the, again, it would be on page three or four, and this is a rec the record dated May 12, 2016, the last line. If it Your Honor, I'm going to object to uh, counsel trying to reflect the witness recollection with a report that's written by somebody else. Anything can be used to refresh your recollection. Right. Okay. 
um, and I talked to my staff about this. I believe she just called to, Ms. Brown called to. Um, I'm asking you if this refreshes your recollection yes, about. Yes, yes. Was there, was, was there additional information provided to Ms. Brown at that time? Yes. Um, are you aware of what kind of information was provided on May 12th? I wish she knew that, but she didn't. I didn't, yeah, I didn't. Okay. You, do you know that there was additional information? How would she know that? Because she keeps the records and she's a supervisor of the... But she would have to know that from someone else's here, so would she? Not whether she knows it, but what I, she may not be able to testify as to whether she, what she, they actually said, but she can certainly testify if the records indicate that there was that additional was Is the records indicate that there was additional concerns? The records indicate that there was a request for the information to be sent. And the May 12th records? Correct. Indicate, do they indicate that there was also? It was a request. There was a request from whom, ma'am? From Ms. Brown. And was there also a continued expression of concern, if you know? If you know. I have no, I have no, I was not. Does the record refresh your recollection? Yes. When it says MHA. Objection, Your Honor. Fine. She's trying to read this record that we have this ongoing objection about as far as the records of the Adam Minor. What's your objection? Yeah, ob objection, Your Honor. Well, you know, I, I was Roger. Let's, let's see what you when, MA, when it says on these records MHA and then reiterate it, do you see that on there? Recollection about whether there was reiterated yes. expressions of concern. Yes. By who? By the mental health advocate. I I, I didn't speak to Ms. Brown again. I'm sorry. I didn't speak to Ms. Brown again. Okay. A member of my staff did. Okay. So a member of your staff indicated in some record that they spoke to Ms. Brown and they. Reiterated concern? Correct, yes. Does that record say anything about what Ms. Brown's response was? No. Does it say who initiated the contact? Yes. Who initiated the contact? Ms. Brown. So Ms. Brown called a member of your team? Yes. And would that be in efforts and still working on the case? Yes. Did you, were you aware that Ms. Brown did nothing to monitor the home situation between April 22nd and... Objection calls for speculation, Your Honor. How would she know that? Sustained. Do you, did you ever see Aaron after, in May? No. Did you ever express to Ms. Brown that you had, that you or no, or someone else had not seen Aaron? No. Do you know if the records reflect that that was expressed? No. Do you know when Aaron was last seen by somebody from mental health? No. Not without looking at a record. Did 
Did you have concerns about Ms. Meyer's ability to parent if she didn't take on any help? Objection, Your Honor, as to uh, that's Ms. Meyer's mental health. She's asking about what medications she's taking and what concerns she has. That wasn't the question. Did you have concerns about her ability to parent when she wasn't taking her medication? Yes. And did you. Well, that wasn't the question. Yeah. You changed it. Well, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Right. Right. Yes. I don't think I did. 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 I don't think
her business were more, she made herself more, she wasn't making herself available. We went anyway, but she was not making herself available. <coughs> Do you know how you access that apartment? We don't have keys, so we have to knock on a door, ring the bell. Okay. That particular place? Yes. Was there um, like a buzzer system, if you know? Yes. So, could you, um, could you actually knock on her immediate door? No. Can you explain exactly what? Well, there was a door, and then you have to go into her apartment, I mean, into the to the doorway in order to knock on her door. You couldn't just knock on her door. She didn't have an outside apartment. You had to go in in order to knock on the door. You had to go to, into the interior. And how would you get into the interior? She would have to let us in. Was, did, were you a frequent visitor there? No. When, on the, were you ever there? Yes. On the times you were there, was that outer door kept secure? Yes. Did you get to know Ms. Minor? Yes. Did she have any relatives, friends, neighbors, to the best of your knowledge, who assisted her in any way? No. Did Aaron have any grandparents, <coughs> aunts, uncles, friends, neighbors, or anybody who assisted him in any way? No. That you knew about? That I knew about. Did, was that something that you would ask her about? Yes. Did anybody else live there with them? Not to my knowledge. Your Honor, I would um, be moving for the admission of the reports that were previously marked and identified with strictly limited to the portions that refer to interactions with CPS or um, CPS and, and, this, and the workers at the development center. She indicated these are records that are kept the um that's it. I would I would I think the court what we want to publish them can can um <coughs> delineate what is referring to CBS or we can highlight or redact portions to um to I can certainly delineate what's relevant and inadmissible as it relates to the people's exhibit, those things that we I will not consider. There were six exhibits. I believe that we've only heard about statements in two of these six exhibits about information with regard to CPS. Two sentences in one and one sentence in another. <coughs> I would object to the addition of the four which don't have any mention of CPS. Well, actually, Number 23, which is the, the re record from April 20th of 2016, the original, and, a re and it is a on page again three, three of four. Does it speak to interactions with CPS on that? Yes. Yeah? Yes. And all uh, and what so that would be exhibit number twenty three, Your Honor. Any objection? Two April twentieth. Yes. <coughs> the April twentieth report before it, it the time is four o'clock PM. 
it was just not that day. All right. Do you so observe this. Yes. As it relates to who or what. As it relates to this minor. With anyone in particular. Just with staff. When we would go out. Your Honor, I just would renew the objection regarding uh, the, the privilege. The yes. objection. No. Right. Yeah. And um, was the child with her at the time? Yes. What was her interaction with him? She was quite, um, she was disengaged. Well, I mean, she was interacting with us, so she wasn't interacting with her son. You didn't see that same kind of behavior? With no, no. And he appeared to be well kept? Yes. Otherwise normal? Otherwise normal. Anything else? I don't think we need to call her a witness. She said she observed those same kinds okay. of behavior. That's fine. I'll, 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 Anything else? No, no. All right, before we do cross, I mean, I'm going to wait for the quick Okay. Okay. Just for a moment.